Huda. Hi, Chloe. How are you? I'm good. Well, anyway, I just wanted to have you on here because I think a lot of the things that you've shared with me throughout our relationship together, the wisdom that you've shared with me is something that other people will also How do you see this? It will help them too. So before we start, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Of course, I would love to. Well, my name is Udelia Guerra. I am originally from Mexico. I've been in the Philippines for 11 years. So ako ay Pilipinas sa puso sa Diwa Tagawa. And I love this culture. I really fell in love with it. Um, so I am a consecrated woman of a spiritual family called Redmond Christi. So Raynum Christi is a spiritual family within the Catholic Church that has different ways of belonging to it. So you can be a priest or a lay person or a consecrated man. I am a consecrated woman. So what that means is basically that in essence, I am just like a sister. I also live poverty, chastity, and obedience like a sister, but I am a lay consecrated, right? So as a consecrated, I'm like a sister, but as a lay, that's why I don't wear a habit and you see me wear normal clothes, right? So, so here in the Philippines for these 11 years, uh, my main work is evangelization and my favorite thing of all times is being able to meet with people like you for mentoring, one-on-one -on -one sessions, spiritual direction. It's my favorite thing. Preach retreats, do missions, reach out to the less fortunate. I love all of that. Okay. Um, how would you describe our relationship with each other? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I love it. Well, I love our relationship. That's something that I can say up front because I really enjoyed a lot talking to you and getting to know you more. I think that, well, as a woman that I am, right, I gave up marriage. So I don't have a physical husband, but Jesus is my husband. And I also love having spiritual children. You know, like I'm not going to give birth to my own kids. But in my heart, I give birth to spiritual children. So I guess that's how I would say about you. You are one of my spiritual children, a very loved one. Yes. Um, <laughs> I explained to you that I wanted this to be a bit different from all the other things that I've done before because this will be more conversational about us sharing our experience with each other because I just know that a lot of people are probably going through a very similar experience in their lives so let's just dive right into it but before that let's just tell them like how we came to know each other how we met and all these things of course you go first okay well because i i don't know if a lot of people know um but i went to a catholic high school and whenever we have games or sporting events um many of you like the consecrate the consecrated women or like the priests usually if you can if you're free you'll come and support um the students yeah. and that was the first time i saw you and met you but how would you explain that like experience because i i don't know what it was like for you to meet me at that time so i remember you guys just had finished a game and you were sitting in the grass and i was just like oh like I want to get to know the girls. So I just sat in the floor. You guys were sitting in the grass, like it was the floor. So I went and sat with you guys. And I remember perfectly meeting you and Juliana. I was like, wow, these girls are so extroverts. We were talking about the fact that Juliana was an only child and you had a lot of siblings and the difference from being an only child and having a lot of siblings. I had a lot of fun meeting you both. Yeah. Um, but me, like what, what first comes to mind when I think about the first time I met you, we can like start talking about like our first impressions of each other because that was the time like I started to really form an impression on you um, and basically when I first had that conversation with you in school I just felt so comfortable telling you anything like immediately I felt so open and it was it was so weird for me because I was a new student I had just moved from another school I was meeting all these types of people I, I had never come across consecrated women in my life whatsoever but I did know that I did know that you guys were well since we were young like you guys were also like authority in school mm -hmm. um, so but I never felt 
afraid to kind of just talk to you and that's what made growing our relationship with you so easy because like immediately I just knew that like I had a friend in you just immediately like I was so comfortable I had so much fun telling you like my feelings and hearing what you had to say about them it's basically that like I think my first impression was just that I could tell you anything like immediately right off the bat yeah I'm so glad I feel so honored that you felt like that really because I I talk to a lot of people and I never feel that I deserve someone's trust you know like I know that trust is something that you build little by little so I'm so happy that you felt so comfortable right away because on my end what I felt is like wow this girl is so joyful <laughs> she's talkative she's talkative and um, the other thing that came to my mind also is like she really wants to learn and grow more I was like wow she's so open she's so open to want to grow more and then for it you're so articulated I was like she has a way of expressing how she feels and what she's going through in a very clear way for someone because how you were in ninth grade when we met yeah I, th- I think I was 15 15 15 years old I was like yeah I was surprised at how good you were able to express yourself given that you were 15 years old that's something that impressed me a lot okay, that's yeah so I enjoyed my I enjoyed my my mentoring sessions with you a lot yeah but if we were like being really honest like I feel like I just got better at also articulating myself through our conversations because I tell you how I felt about things and then you had a way of putting them into perspective that made it easier for me to kind of express them more I don't know why but that's that's I think that's why it was right off the bat like I was so comfortable telling you anything and that's pretty rare for me like I, I make a lot of friends like I make a lot of friendships but I don't really share a lot about my life to every single person if I were to really count the number of people who know a lot about me would be like three people in this world um, mm-hmm. just, that was new to me because I was so comfortable with you I was also able to experience like my greatest growth and that's basically why I wanted you to be on here because it wouldn't have happened had I not like crossed paths with you and that's just something that I really believe in my heart because that's how I see it you're so integral to my growth as a person and my growth in faith and just all these different aspects in my life like what would you describe as my greatest growth or like how would you describe my growth throughout our relationship Oh, that's a really good point. I think that the first element about the fact that you were able to grow is that you wanted to grow. Okay. Yeah. Because, right, I mean, if you don't want to grow, you just don't. But you were open, you were docile, you were flexible, you would listen, right? So the fact that you wanted to grow was always something. It was, it was soil that was ready for, it to, for the seed to come, to be planted, and to grow. So that, that also that made it something very beautiful and even easy sometimes to help you really okay um yeah that you wanted to grow that i wanted to grow yeah i think did so you? did you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, to grow? I, I remember <laughs> that's why like it was easy for me to talk to you because i just knew that you were just gonna be this like guiding force so I just wanted to know like your thoughts on like everything that was going on in my life like I was just so excited about changing but also I wanted to be better okay but we do have to like admit that there were many moments when I wasn't you know you you say it was easy to guide me because I wanted to grow but even when I wanted to grow there were still these conflicting feelings because I found it so difficult like when you were starting to present me with the steps um, it was kind of hard for me to live up to that because I didn't realize that growing was gonna take so much so what would you say were some of the difficulties you faced when you were trying to guide me I think I can say I had two difficulties with you the first one is that you're a person that has a lot of energy and a lot of drive but as someone with energy and drive, you can also be sometimes very stubborn. <laughs> so it was hard to make you go from point A to point B, like to help you change your perspective on things to something different, you know, like 
sometimes the real way of looking at them, you know? Yes. You were younger back then, right? So it's like you you were only 15. So it was like, okay, little by little as she was growing, you were actually were you were able to walk yourself to see the things the way that they should be seen. So I think that was the first one, that you're stubborn. <laughs> but I love you the way you are. I agree. I agree. And, then, <laughs> and then the second one that um, you're a perfectionist. So you wanted everything to be perfect. So you needed to be perfect, school needed to be perfect, family life needed to be perfect, your career needed to be perfect. And perfection is not something that is very possible for human beings. So you had a low tolerance for frustration. It's like, I want this level of perfection and I'm not achieving it. And you were constantly like unsatisfied. Yeah. So I think those two, I would say. Okay, you were actually the one who explained to me what being a perfectionist was, like perfectly. Well, that's so funny that I used the word perfect. But anyway. <laughs> um, Thanks. <laughs> but you were like, you told me you were like, being a perfectionist isn't exactly like being perfect at everything. It's wanting people's view of you to be perfect. Exactly. Well, you that's remember. When, that's when it made so much sense to me. Like, that's how I would explain it now to people who ask me about what it was like for me, like what my journey was like. Like, that's exactly how I explain it now. And that's because mm-hmm. I heard it from you. Um, I'm so glad. And it made so much sense because that's exactly what I was doing. Like, I was trying to make everything perfect externally. But inside, I was so frustrated. The frustration was growing. Um, So, like, to many people, like, I was right on track. You know, a lot of these things were going so well for me. And they probably were. But I wasn't seeing it the way um, that I needed to be seeing it. Because I was so focused on how other people saw it. That's an experience that not only... I go through I think a lot of people also feel the same way and that's why again like I wanted to be able to talk to you about it because um, like I was saying before I feel the most comfortable with you because I feel like you see me the way I want to be seen Hmm. knowing everything that you know about me all the good things and also all the bad things that I've needed to work on like you still continue to want me to be better without judging me for the choices that I've made or continue to make sometimes you've really just helped me grow loving me like the path that you chose to approach my situation was exactly how I needed it to be and one of like my biggest frustrations in life as I've told you so many times was wanting how I knew myself, my heart, and my intentions to align with how other people saw me. And that's that's something you had to like point out to me and say that it's impossible. Like it just it just it's something that can't be achieved. But because I really uh, look to you for guidance and I trust the way that you see me, like how would you describe the image of me? in your head like how do you see me i remember when you asked me to say some words in your table and i really i really prayed about why what i wanted to say about you and i still go back to to that i think that claudia the way i see you is you're you're a constant searcher you're constantly searching the thing about you is that you don't stay you know like nice relaxed at your couch trying to have the things find you, you know, you go out to find them. So I think that it's been beautiful for me to witness the way that I would describe you is that you're a constant searcher for happiness. You're always out there trying to be happy and make other people happy. You're a constant searcher of how to help others, how to make them happy. A constant searcher for the truth. As you were saying, no, like you, because you love the truth so much, you wanted everyone to know the truth about yourself. And it's like, I mean, thousands of people cannot know the truth about yourself. Mm-hmm. Only a handful can know you fully, right? Um, I think that also, the, you, you're a constant searcher of yourself as well, of your emotions, your thoughts, your desires, your career, what you want. So I think that, you know, ambition is not something essentially wrong. And I think that you search all of that with a very beautiful and positive ambition, a sincere desire to, to grow, to excel, to be the best that you can be. 
in all those in all those elements. Yes. I wouldn't actually I would say I wouldn't describe you anymore as someone that is perfectionist. Like I think you were perfectionist back then. Okay. Now I think you have a much more balanced outlook about who you are and how you want to achieve what you want. Okay. But not not in a perfection that is not achievable. You know what I mean? Yes. Now I now I know what you mean. Before I was <laughs> No, you understand. <laughs> Before it was like I need to be the perfect student. I need to be the perfect, like this, like that. Like I just needed to perfect everything, and I didn't understand the importance of just like how great just being balanced is. Like it didn't have to, um, one didn't have to outweigh the other, or um, especially like what other people thought of me. It didn't have to outweigh like my inner. Um, value like the way I valued myself um, and one of the biggest things that I learned from you like even when I was coming up with this whole episode and like talking to my friend about it I told him how the reason why you were able to help me so much was because you made structure and like routine seem normal like it, it didn't seem scary like you presented it in a way that was going to aid me in my life you know i trusted you with like all these different aspects in my life because you were able to um reframe it like my ideas about it in a way that helped me do them without feeling unhappy does that make sense mm-hmm. yeah yeah so just before like we end this because i think a lot of the conversations we had like i said a lot of people go through i just want to ask you like how would you simplify the steps to living a balanced life good well i think that there in life there are many elements to a person that are important to consider you know like um, when i met you and you were going through your episodes of anxiety or your instability, right? Your frustrations. Um, I really tried my best to help you realize that life is not only about, life is not just one track. It has many elements to it that are important for you to be able to live a balanced and healthy life. And I'm a personal, I'm an advocate to it. Like I like living myself the way that I try to teach you guys to live it, no? So enough hours of sleep, healthy eating, exercise, time for prayer or to develop your spirituality, right? And then a good amount of study if you're a student or work, of course, if you have to go out there in the work field and have your, go to the office and work. And then as well, a time with friends, time with family, all of those elements make a life something that it's whole. If not, there's something lacking and that's where we find the lack of balance. So. I wouldn't say that um, working is more important or like being with family is more important than working. No, you also need to go and work. Like you have to be good at your job. You have to get good grades, but being with your family, it's also very important. You need to find the balance. And when we talk about finding a balance, since we're all very different, balance looks different for each person. And that's something very important. For example, me, I go crazy if I don't do exercise. But some of my consecrated sisters do not need exercise to be okay, Mm -hmm. right? So my balanced life looks like exercise, prayer, work, family life, community life. Their balanced life doesn't have sports in the equation, but mine does, (laughs) you know what I mean? So I think that that's something that has been beautiful for me to be able to contribute in your life and the life of other girls in the mentoring and spiritual directions to help each one of you to find how your look, how your balanced life looks like. Okay. From a mental point of view, we, we're speaking about like balance in different aspects in our lives. But how about like when it comes to like just the simple, this what you told me before, like to simplify it like when it comes to like our emotions and our experience of it Mm -hmm. like how do we approach that perfect yeah so just to link from what i said to what i'm gonna say now is that to live a balanced life there's never a perfect day to start 
whoever's watching this video today needs to understand that like today is my perfect day to start living a balanced life there's no such thing right so um transitioning i would say that there are three steps to be able to process your emotions your sentiments your feelings so they're quite obvious but they're very helpful they help me a lot the first one is to acknowledge the feeling whether it's positive or negative you need to admit it to yourself because sometimes we're experts at keeping it at the back of our heads and we don't want to like i'm sad but i don't want to admit it to myself that i'm sad well you have to look at it you know like sit down and accept like right now i'm feeling sad so the first thing is to acknowledge it the second one is to learn what is that feeling telling me so okay i'm sad why am i sad and you're gonna learn something great about yourself when you're capable of articulating why are you sad well i am sad because my family is going through a lot of financial problems and i feel asphyxiated because i don't know how to help or how to support i feel so limited right and then the third point is act on it positively like don't sink on your sadness but do something about it right so although you're limited and you might not be able to help your family as much as you want to for sure there is something you can do to help your family so maybe sit down with your mom and your dad talk to them about it and see okay what's my little way of contribution how can i contribute same when you feel it same when you feel impatient right it's like I'm so nagakainis at this person. So what is this telling you and how can you act with patience towards that person? Okay. So I think those three steps help us a lot because if not, we just become like a bomb of pressure that then one day we're going to explode because we don't process our feelings and our emotions. I mean, that's basically it. Like that's something that you've always taught me. You've helped me process my thoughts in a way that was easy for me to digest basically and a lot of the thoughts and the feelings that i had whenever i would express it to you it was exactly that you were able to reframe it in such a way that made it easier for me to approach it felt possible like it wasn't supposed to overwhelm me the way that it was because there are things that i can do to make it easier not necessarily easier but just for me to have a better perspective on it And I kind of just really want to thank you because, like I said before, like I really wouldn't think of half the things that I think of now, like had you not been there as my guiding force. And I'm so glad that now, given my platform, I can also help you grow your platform because I think the world needs to hear your wisdom. And I'm so glad that now you have that opportunity. So I just If can you ask people to check out your pages and stuff? Of course, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share that. Well, recently I started um, a show in Instagram that is called Anything Bude. So my Instagram is Bude Guerra. You can check it out. I have a lot of fun. So it's every Thursday at 5 p.m. So we're having now an episode of six weeks, and then we're gonna move on to something different. So check it out on Thursday. I'm very excited to be able to to reach out to more people through this. Exactly, because I think you're the perfect candidate. I honestly think that. <laughs> I have a lot of fun doing it. I know. <laughs> well, and you're just a natural. For me, you're a natural. Like it's it's <laughs> what I'm meant to be doing. <laughs> Thank you. I so think God has given me a great opportunity. Yes. So thank you Huda for doing this. This means so much to me. As well for me. It means a lot to me as well. Thank you for inviting me. Of I course. always love talking to you. Okay, thank you Huda. Thank you also Chloe.